Ah, it is now. There it is. Perfect. All right. Wow. We got house full. That's awesome. Now you guys aren't going to be quiet on me, are you? Now, I, 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 love, I love to be able to interact with you, and obviously we've got a huge room of people, and that's okay. Uh, we may not be able to get to talk as much as I would like to talk, but I, uh, I would like to talk with you. Uh, but hopefully we, we can talk more. This being the first session, I, I was like, yes, got the first session. Sweet. Okay. <laughs> Let me start out by telling you who I am uh, and what I do, just a little bit about me. Um, my name is Patty Chapman. I work at the National Assemblies of God office. Um, I'm in the Children's Ministries Department. And so I get to do what I love to do every day, all the time. Um, and my, my title is actually Resource Specialist. So I get to play with all the toys. <laughs> it's just too cool. <laughs> so, so I get to have lots of fun doing that. And then I get to work with uh, wonderful leaders like you guys. I am, I am so blessed. You just guys just don't know. I'm not going to give away. Uh, I get to speak a little bit, just a little bit in the morning, just a teeny little bit. I got a story for you in the morning, so I'm not going to give it away in here. So you guys will just have to wait and see what it is. All right, everybody's in here for Children's Ministries Ideas Exposed, right? Yes? Okay, we are going to fly, folks. Are you guys ready to fly? All right, because well, I've got a ton of stuff to tell you. As I was going through my notes, I was like, oh, i got to cut something out. I can't cut something out. i got to cut something out. So anyway, um, here's what I'd like to, do, like to do, too, so that I make sure that you guys get what you need to have. Um, I, I literally have all of these um, resources and websites and things that I'm going to be giving out um, I have them on like an eight page document that's got clickable links. So what I'm going to do is make sure I have all of your email addresses and have Nettie and Brent get that out to you. So you're not having to try to scribble really fast and get this, okay? Because it's no fun to have to type in all those weird email or those weird uh, URLs, right? So, so we can just talk and you can take it in. Don't worry about scribbling all those out. I will get those to you, okay? Some way, shape, or form, we'll get them all to you, okay? All right, here we go. Do you know why? They've cut, touched on it in some of the lessons, in some of the sessions already. I'm like, I'm like, don't don't take what I'm going to start with. <laughs> um, but do you know why you do children's ministries? Have you thought about? I want you to take. I want to take you way back there first before we ever start, because you got to know why you do what you do. I loved the way where Damon was going. Um, I feel like we need to start this whole session, like the AA meetings, and go. My name's Patty. I am a Martha. <laughs> Because that's the way I was feeling. I was like, gee, many Christmas talk about stomping on my toes. Anybody else with me on that? Or am I just, was it just me? Okay. Well, um, I love this scripture, and I'm just going to read it real quick. And they were bringing children to him so that he might touch them. But the disciples rebuked them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, I don't know about you, but I would not want to be on the other side of Jesus being indignant. <laughs> I, I read that and I, I always have to take pause at that for a minute and go, that would not be a pretty picture. <laughs> um, Permit the children to come to me. Do not hinder them for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child will not enter it at all. And he took them in his arms and began blessing them, laying his hands on them. That's in Mark. Let's pray before we get started too, into it too deep here. Dear Jesus, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you that you have called us to a ministry that you, in your word, have deemed so vitally important. God, thank you for giving us the privilege and the opportunity, as Damon just told us, to point these children, these little ones, just point them to you. God, as we talk about these resources, help us not to get caught up in the resource, but to get caught up in all the wonderful tools that you have given us, that you can anoint and you can use as we faithfully steward them. Lord, we love you, we praise you, and we give you glory. Amen. All right, guys. What I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of walk you through some of the hot spots that I hear when I, when I talk to children's leaders around the nation, the things they ask for pretty regularly, okay? So I'm going to walk you through some of those, um, and I'm going to start with security. That's one of the things I hear about over and over and over again. Where do I get, where do I find, um, or how do I know 
how that our team is secure, that our space is secure and all that kind of good stuff. And I, I've come up with some scriptures for each of these. I love this one. Stay alert. This is hazardous work. Did you guys know you were in hazardous work? <laughs> <laughs> you got to put a red yellow stripe across you. Uh, uh, work I'm assigning you. You're going to be like sheep running through a wolf pack. So don't uh, call attention to yourself. Be as cunning as a snake, inoffensive as a dove. We know how that is, don't you? In children's ministries, that's how we have to be all the time. So here's a couple of things that you will want to kind of take note of. Again, don't worry about scribbling because I will definitely, and I have a way longer list than this. This is just some of the ones I wanted to highlight on. Church Law Today has all kinds of information for you as children's leaders. How many of you have some type of security? Please... I almost don't want to what look <laughs> because usually I usually I look and, and everybody's like security volunteer checks huh no seriously uh, that was a good showing of hands so I'm I'm uh, glad that you guys have got that together um, make sure that yeah uh, volunteer checks are so important these days um, this this grandma is talking from. Um, experience. My daughter got involved in a really bad relationship and um, found out after she was pregnant that he was a um, sex offender. Had actually literally twisted her in his loop was what had happened and trying to get her away from him was literally came to me just screaming to God every day. Break this break this. I can't do anything. I, I'm done. I can't, I can't help her. You're going to have to break it. He did but now uh, we have Drew, which I am, he's, he's wonderful. He's the most wonderful child on the face of the planet. <laughs> if you all didn't know that, okay, I just want to let you know. <laughs> That's right, the best looking one, everything else. But his dad would love to get a hold of him. I am very glad that my church knows how security works. They know how to keep him safe. They have a nice tag for him that says he is not to be picked up by anybody other than da da da. And, you know, that it, it matters. It matters, people. We live in a very different world than we've ever lived in before. Um, the map of sex offenders, I don't know if you've ever used that. How many of you, have any of you ever used that? It's a really cool little thing. You can go on. It's not cool to see how many sex offenders are out there, but it is cool to be able to see where they are in your community. Um, I pastored in a little bitty church in the middle of nowhere. The town was 1,700 people, literally out rural nowheresville. Um, popped it up. Um, 1,700 people, 17 sex offenders in that little bitty town, and one lived right next to the, next to the church. Yay! <laughs> so, but you know, good to know. Good to know because in little towns things happen. All right, Redu reducing the risk is another great one. Volunteer Select will help you do background checks, and some of these I'm going to really fly through, guys. Um, any any questions about security before I leave security, though? I will stop probably between each one of these and let you guys ask questions. Don't be afraid of the thing being recorded. No big deal. No? All right. Are you guys really going to be this quiet this whole time? Seriously? <laughs> I hope not. Oops, come back. Come back. Registration? Did you know it's okay to count people? Um, you know, the, the saying that goes that, you know, um, we count people because people count. Yeah, it really is true, and um, I think it registration a registration system of some type, even if it's just an index card that you're keeping on those kids, is so important. My idea is, and I try to you know cram this into any registration people I ever have helping me, is that that child that may be the only time I ever see that child. It might be the only chance I ever get to get their name and their uh, phone number and their parents' information and their address and so I can send them a card, so I can visit them, so I can keep up with them, so I can whatever. So don't fail to get it first time out, the first time they're there in your ministry. So some type of a registration system. All right, let me give you a few that are my favorites. Um, I'm going to start from the bottom because Parent Pager is one of my favorites. We use Parent Pager um, on the national level at General Counsel. We do Kids Council every year, and we use Parent Pager. I've worked with these folks um, on a very <laughs> close, close basis. I mean, they literally were changing their program from, to meet our needs on site. It was, they're, they, they love helping churches. So um, they're, they're great. Fellowship Tech or Fellowship One and Inspire. All great ones. How many of you have a registration system? 
some kind. Super. Are you uh, mostly electronic or are we on the, yeah, I'm seeing a lot of head shaking, yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. You like your systems. I see some heads going like this too. All right, all right. Um, sometimes we have to work within systems. I was at a church of about a thousand and um, they wanted me to use the church software which is not built for kids ministry <laughs> as you all know probably know so yeah you, you may have to work within systems um, but yeah I'd, I'd definitely recommend if you can find uh, find those spaces where you can uh, get something that actually works for you countdowns now here's the only reason I bring this up I'm not gonna spend here long how many of you start on time don't maybe don't answer that <laughs> All right, well, this one hit me a, a few years back. That This is really, I've, I've always been kind of a stickler on this, but I saw it start happening in a ministry I was just volunteering in. And what was happening was m later and later and later, it got that we actually started service. And it, it just kind of, it was that light bulb moment of, we only have them so long and we need to use every minute of that time now if it's creative now at, at the church that we're at right now we actually get them a good extended amount of time so the first 15 minutes is to for the kids to be playing on games and the leaders to be playing with them and it's really specific social interaction and getting to know one another so if it's a specific that's one thing but if it's just because you're not quite ready or you know those types of things yeah, you know, a countdown but can be so uh, so so uh, vitally important. And I always put teenagers or or uh, even sometimes junior hires on my computer because they will do whatever they pretty much whatever I told them to do. And I would say, hey, if that person is not up on the platform to do what they're supposed to do, go ahead and push the button and let you know, they'll just kind of be floundering or whatever. I was very mean. You may not, <laughs> I may not be one you want to work for. Um, here's some great places. Uh, there are free countdowns out there if you can't afford to get them. Um, count, uh, I love a, a little program. I didn't put it up here. It is on my big list. It's called Countdown Creator. Anybody ever used it? It's really sweet. You guys need to take a look at it. It's like 35 bucks and you can put your own videos behind a countdown or your own pictures. Like we'll put in, we'll take pictures one Sunday of kids everywhere and then put a countdown behind it. And then that'll be the countdown for the next week. And the kids love seeing themselves up on the screen. So, you know, for 35 bucks, you can have your own countdown every week. Uh, praise and worship. Okay. This is one that I always get hit with big time. Where, um, what kind of praise and worship you guys using? Just throw me, throw me out some thoughts and ideas before I go to mine. What are you using? You aren't using anything. All right. <laughs> we need more help than I thought. Yeah, just CDs. CDs. What kind? Just kids praise and worship. Kids praise and worship. Okay. Any certain names, numbers? I've no, uh, interestingly enough, uh, I d I'm not knowing any of the songs. I don't know if it's because I'm so from so far away. <laughs> The, in the worship time here, um, but I'm, I'm hoping that you all know them. Um, no? <laughs> Some of you shaking your heads no. So it may be to this church. All right. Um, anything, uh, anything stick out that you guys are, that you guys love, that you really want to use? Hillsong Kids. Okay. Okay. Hillsong Kids has got some superb things. Yes. Sure. They are always quality. True Worship. True Worship. Okay. Yep. That's another good one. It's a really good one. These are group. BBS. Okay. Year. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because then you've got new ones that come in and get added into during the VBS time and then keep using them. Yeah. Yeah, it's sad not to use anything you, that you introduce at VBS all the way through, for sure. What else? <laughs> wow, guys. <laughs> okay. Well, let me give you a couple. Um, I did have Hillsong on the list. If you did not know, how many of you know of Church on the Move? You know who I'm talking about when I say Church on the Move? Yeah. Down in Oklahoma. Um, they are down in Tulsa. Um, their stuff has always been, I've always loved their stuff, and I found not very long ago that they're putting their stuff out there online. Free. All right? Free. <laughs> Let me say it again. It's free. <laughs> and it's some really good stuff. They've got some, they've got uh, different kinds of media. Uh, some of their songs are some of our kids' favorite ones right now. I'm introducing them a little bit. Now, you have to be really, and you can go, by the way, you can go on YouTube um, and pull their um, 
motions to the songs. Okay, but you have to be really. I'm having to do an exercise program to actually lead these songs. <laughs> so, we get done. We got done every Sunday, and my husband's making fun of me. Why are you breathing so hard? Is why I'm tired. <laughs> so, but the kids love it. Kids love it. Oh, um, I need to stop on Jumpstart Three. Uh, if you haven't heard of these guys, they are brand new. I met this guy first of the year. Uh, they are doing modern pop music. Um, he actually is a music producer. His son was trying to learn scripture in their church, or I think in the Ranger program, trying to learn scripture in the church. He decided to help his son learn scripture. And so they did it the old fashioned way memorize, 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 and they weren't getting anywhere. You know, they'd learned maybe one verse. And he's like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I produce music all day long. What if I took my talent that God's given me and start producing music that hits a kid, the kid's learning level and learning love. So he's produced music for, um, he does uh, music like for Zumba, okay, so that, kind, that type of music. So it's a very, very high tech, very, very cool sound. Uh, so take a listen to these guys. I, uh, I'm very, very impressed with them starting to use some of the, uh, what they do in our church and <coughs> the kids are loving it. All right. You guys good so far? Yeah? Okay. Going on. Okay, curriculum, curriculum, and this is where you guys were all wanting me to get to. I'm going to hop through a few of these. There's other ones that I want to spend some time on, and I don't know where my, let me get a time out. That's why I know what time it is. I don't want to hold you guys too long. Um, Bible Fact Pack, BibleFactPack.com, again, that will be on the list, um, is a great place that you can actually use uh, questions and answers. How many of you have a JBQ program? A few, okay, okay, all right. Um, if you have a JBQ program, they're using Bible Fact Pack. What we're trying to get out to uh, people that the Bible Fact Pack questions are great for any time, whether it be for Sunday school or in children's church, or they're they're great questions. They could be review questions at the end of a service. You could use them for games. Um, so check out BibleFactPack.com, and I think you will be quite impressed with what you can find there. How many of you know who What's in the Bible folks are? Okay. How many of you know who Phil Vischer is? Oh, seriously? Bob and Larry? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Veggie Tales. Oh, yeah. That guy. Yeah. Um, Phil Vischer um, has started a new company called What's in the Bible. And if you have not seen this yet, I would highly recommend you take a look. The reason I, I love this is he handles... He handles scripture with kids like none other. He gets how to get deep truths. Um, I don't know about you guys, but there was a point in time where um, I was getting really frustrated with curriculum because it was all kind of sitting right up here. There was no depth to it at all. And it was like, I want my kids to dig. I don't want my kids to just be, you know, top of the line Christians, you know, or top of the, the water Christians. I want him to dig deep. And he digs deep. He digs really deep. And in, 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 there's a curriculum. There's actually a church edition. And there is a home edition. So it's really cool that you can actually send kids home. to You know, that parents have it at home that they can watch other videos and stuff. So um, one hiccup on this one. It, it, um, I would not consider it a children's church <coughs> curriculum. It's more of a large group, small group curriculum all right so um and it, and the large group is a very small time it's like just kind of get the facts to everybody and then divide off um so and i think that happens like four times in the curriculum so um i'd recommend using it if you have a sunday if you still have a, something going on on sunday night that you have to do with the kids or if you actually have small groups that you 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 know that you do in your church for kids or even wednesday night uh, and maybe it's just through the summer to give Rangers and Girls Ministries a, a break or whatever. That would be some of my recommendations on that one. And by the way, all the stuff I'm showing you is out at the table that you can come take a look at it uh, later as well, as well uh, at the table after lunch. <laughs> um, young Explorers. Any, anybody in here remember Young Explorers or have used Young Explorers? All right. This is not a new curriculum. All right. Please hear me. This is not a new curriculum because what will happen when you when you open it up, there will be some, when you put it in, there will be some things that say, 
turn the cassette player to. <laughs> The reason we haven't taken it off the shelves is because the content is so deep and good. We find people that want to keep this on their shelves just as ideas, just as brainstorm or as a, a pull an object lesson here, pull a memory verse game there, pull a Bible story here or whatever. That it's a great library and the really cool thing about it is there is a whole year's worth of curriculum on each uh, each of those volumes, and each volume is only $99. So it's you know a whole year's worth of, of ideas for you to bounce off of, and, and like I said, the content is good. It's there. Okay, going on. How many of you ever heard of Planet Shakers? No? no not even the music pl from Planet Shakers in Australia? Yeah? Okay, starting to hit a few few buttons. That's where this is coming from. We just partnered with Planet Shakers, um, and we're very excited to be in partnership with them because they uh, they just know how to do things. They're very they're they're right on top of the ball game, and um, um, Planet Shakers, the church in Australia, has a kids area obviously, and they do curriculum really well. And again, it goes deep. I've reviewed a lot of this, and it, and it gets into some deep pieces. This one they, they actually got with Reggie Dabbs and he goes into Who Am I in Christ uh, on the one that's um, uh, spotlighted here, but they've got a whole line. The really cool thing, and I, I think every curriculum ought to do this. It's just too fun. What you do is you take the DVD and you put it in wherever, whether it's a computer or, uh, you know, or on a media center or whatever, and all you have to do, and this is nice for small, smaller churches that have maybe one person running it or somebody that's not real tech savvy, uh, you put it in. And so if you want the memory verse, and I don't remember, it's called hot keys. I don't remember all the keys exactly. But say you want the memory verse to come up, you hit an M, and the memory verse pops up. You hit a B, and the Bible lesson pops up. You hit a, okay? And so that it's that easy to use. So a really, really fun thing to do, all right? Fun thing to use. Faith case. How many are faith case users? <laughs> a few, a few of you. Not too many. Okay, okay. Um, if you haven't used faith case, another easy one to use. Um, we actually have five faith cases right now. Uh, investigating the truth, if you're interested, actually goes through the 16 fundamental truths of the Assemblies of God. Um, so, and it breaks them down to fun. Um, we even heard, when I, we first put this out, we heard of churches that were having their adults do it as well as the kids. And they were having a blast doing it. And they were learning what those 16 fundamental truths are of the, you know, that we, we base everything that we know on. So it was really, really great to hear that. Fruit of the Spirit, the Beatitudes, you see, a, you see a very strong weave of the Holy Spirit through these and how the Holy Spirit empowers our lives. All right? And it, it takes a journey with a, a group of kids and, an, and some wild and wacky investigators and your kids actually go on a journey through trying to figure this out. Um, usually it's not laid out right up front. You bring your kids in as the investigators and it's a lot of fun. And again, if you guys have questions later about these, I know we're speeding through them because I don't want to keep you from your meals. That would not be fun. Oops, I went wrong way. But you guys are still way too quiet. <laughs> All right. Yes, ma'am. On faith case, I know yes. it's not the way that it was done, but mm -hmm. I know for us, we're a smaller church, so we couldn't buy a curriculum just for 10 weeks mm -hmm. so we did it we break it up and just do one the first week and then focus on the topic the whole month so oh that's good a that's a great idea that's a superb idea yeah you can definitely do that and i know there's enough material in there to yeah <laughs> to actually yeah spread it out over a, even a couple of weeks even if you use the curriculum as it is mm -hmm. so yeah keep those things in mind usually and that's almost true of all curriculum I have seen very few curriculums that you, if you did everything, you could really get it in the whole Sunday. There's just, there's usually no way. Um, and let me throw out another idea that we did, um, oh, it's been some years back at a church. We were experimenting with something uh, on a Wednesday night, uh, and we did it through the summer to give our girls' ministries and Royal Ranger leaders a break. And um, what we did is we took the curriculum, and so on Sunday morning was the the 
really now let me set it up to two for you wednesday night we had bus kids coming in sunday morning we did not it was the church kids so sunday morning we did kids church like we always we always did you know they loved it they were learning they were disciples they get it wednesday night we had all the bus kids that you know a little bit on the edgy side a little bit on the crazy side so we pumped it up but what we did was we literally took the curriculum and split it in half and retold the bible story a, just a little bit different way there was i think there was either three or four object lessons so or or some type of a less uh, addition to the lesson and so we took two of them there and two of them here did a wild and crazy game both in See where I'm going? So you could literally have something, and the kids were learning the same thing twice, which I think repetition works with kids. <laughs> so, uh, so it was, and it was a lot of fun. Just made it look a little different. So don't hesitate to try to um, change things up a bit. Mega Sports Camp. Who's done a Mega Sports Camp? Okay, a few of you again. Okay, Mega Sports Camp. When I first came to the national office, I looked at them and I went. Sports camp. I never had needed to do a mega sports camp because it was always somebody else doing it, uh, the VBS stuff. So I said, I got to do a mega sports camp. So I went to my children's pastor. Uh, I volunteer at a children's church because I travel so much, there's no way I can actually be a children's pastor, but I volunteer every time in, I'm in town. Um, and I said, Can I do a, a, a mega sports camp here? He said, Yeah. And I thought, this is going to be a good test because I mean I, I travel uh, at least a couple of times a month and I am way busy working 40 hour a week job so I am that normal person you know that yeah is working children's ministries that needs to do something like this we pulled it off and it was so easy the kids absolutely loved it kids that don't normally come to church came to church because it's sports mm -hmm. and moms and dads will send their kids to a sports camp where they might not sp send them to a VBS all right um, some of the uh, and some of the excuses I had heard was hey we're landlocked we don't have any place to do basketball there's no way we can do football or we can do uh, baseball and so I kind of experimented on that side too and I thought okay what do we have in the church we have a kitchen we could do cooking do you know, guys, after three years, that class we have had to limit and we have to cut off because that's the one everybody wants to go to? <laughs> it's like, wait a minute. And then this last year, we added photography because we had a photographer that said she could do a, a class on photography for the kids. And we bought them all the little cool pics cameras. And again, we had to limit it. But still, it was using the talents of the people within our church and helping helping then everybody get involved. The other thing, if you do have the space to do the sports stuff, guess who else gets involved? Dads. Dads. Yeah. The guys. It's a great way to get the guys and teenagers. Teenagers love to help with the sports stuff. So so just some some thoughts there. Any of you guys that have used it got any other ideas or thoughts? Yes, ma'am. We added Legos and cheer. Le Legos. What's what? Would you do that? Came for VBS and they could take a Legos class. Oh. All the sports. We used the school next door for um, for some of our sports. Very cool. Very cool. Good idea. Good idea. Anybody else? We build derby cars. D uh, perfect. Build the derby cars. Yeah. Get them ready. Yeah. Anything else? We use our kids complex, it's a sports complex that's down the road from us. Okay. And that's part of the training is just by running, obviously, the conditioning to this, the field. But they, they let us use it, obviously. Mm -hmm. Complimentary. Yeah. Nonprofit. Yeah, yeah, that, and that's something that you can definitely do. You know, you don't have to invest a whole lot. You can, you literally can have kids all bring their own balls. You know, bring make sure they bring their own mitts or, or whatever it is, and then ask to use a you know, and it's a great way to uh, get into the school or whatever, because uh, they'll let you use it. They'll run it to you just like they will anybody else. All right, and maybe let let you have it for free. So yeah, great outreach, great way to reach out into your community. All right. We've got some digital inif initiatives coming up, and I I, uh, I use this scripture a lot. I love this scripture. Somebody brought it up to me like this, and I went, oh, that's so good. 
and I'm, I'm hoping that you guys have not heard this before, but if you have, that's okay. He told him this parable. No one tears a patch from a new garment and sews it in an old one. If he does, he will have torn the new garment and the patch from the new will not match the old. And no one pours new wine into old wineskins. If he does, the new wine will burst the skins, the wine will run out, and the wineskins will be ruined. No, new wine must be poured into new wineskins. Y'all didn't think about that one being kids, did you? Think about, think about you've got this new wineskin, or you've got, you've, got, you've got kids, all right? And if we try to pour the old stuff in them all the time, it's just not working, all right? We need to be pouring new stuff, new wine into the new wineskins. Now, our kids like computers, right? Is, do any of your kids not like computers or the iPads? My three-year-old grandson knows how to operate my iPad, I think, better than I do. He sometimes gets it from me, and he's just like this, and it's like, true! <laughs> so, I, and sometimes he changes things around. Sometimes I have to look, because he's actually moved my icons. It's like, okay, <laughs> this is just too much. Um, but our kids are, that's where they're at. That's where they're at. Um, I need to ask this before we move on. How many of you guys are on Facebook? Okay, good. There was literally one that I did like this with a group of this size about a year ago, and maybe two people were on Facebook. I'm like, okay, guys, no, no, no. We got to get, we got to get in the groove here. We got to get in the game. All right. Um, and I know your kids are not supposed to be on Facebook. I even had this argument given to me that, well, kids aren't supposed to be, so I am not going to be on there, and I'm not going to friend them. I'm like, okay, I agree with you. The uh, law says that they can't be. But that doesn't mean they aren't. Yeah, they are out there. They are, they are on Facebook. They are where they're not supposed to be. And I certainly want to be out there with them if they're, that's where they're going to be. Because I can't control what their parents let them do. Uh, I can make a recommendation, but I can't control that. So I want to be out there with them. So we are starting to try to figure out from uh, the national office, how can we help you guys in the whole digital world because that's where our kids are moving to okay so I've got a few different things and I'm gonna what I'm gonna try to do so let's see if I can hook in real quick here um, kid Bible heroes and I'm gonna pop this off guys it's gonna go bye bye kid Bible heroes uh, is an online storybook that has been created for your kids. Have you have, have any of you seen Kid Bible Heroes yet? No. Cool. I love, tell, I love showing new things. Let's see if it comes up. If it doesn't, I'll just show you. I'll, I'll just we'll kind of look at it on the iPad. Well, maybe. David and Goliath. It's not going to come up. Oh, maybe? No? There it is. Yay! Oh, I think I have a loose cord here. Ah! Okay, there we go. All right. So David and Goliath is a, sto is a story. Long ago in the land of Israel. Obviously, y'all know David and Goliath's David. story. But it's highly interactive, okay? It's, it's, and, and you guys are going to have to watch what I'm popping, I'm popping here. So I can make the sheep ba. <laughs> make the birds come out of the trees and the fish pop. And David do his thing. All right. And then, and then there are games. And by the way, you all knew that David took pizza to his brothers, right? <laughs> Bread and cheese. Okay. <laughs> A little bit of veggies. All right. Um, oh, I probably have missed the rock, right? Yep. Oh, you got it. Oh, I didn't jump in. I usually do better scoring at this. Come on, come on. Yay, I got 100 points. So there's games in here to, for the kids to play. Um, there are, um, up here, the question mark always means that it's a game, and it'll tell you how to play the game. There's also the scrolls that are up in the top right-hand co corner. The first step in doing something great for God is to be obedient. David obeyed his father's request to take food to his brothers. Ask a grown-up to tell you about a time when being obedient helped him or her do something great for God. So a great way for your parents to interact with their kids, you know, and, and have that conversation, those, those conversations that they sometimes aren't sure about having. Um, 
this is not necessarily, but you could use this. Obviously, this would be fun to tell. In a, you know, if you had like a small group or whatever, you could use these. Um, we've even had some parents actually take this um, when they can do uh, stories, you know, in school. Sometimes they can read a story and you can read any story you want. We've had some parents take this and do this. Well, how much fun is that to have the kids? Um, hot dogs, turkey, or steaks, which would you like? So it's just a lot of fun. It's really interactive. Um, we have, and I'm gonna, get, uh, I'm not gonna go back there because I wanna. Uh, we have David and Goliath, fishes and loaves. The story of the bo the boy that who had the fishes and loaves. Okay, and how he thought that through, and how he all that went in his mind. Um, again, it's Kid Bible Heroes. Miriam's courage is just coming out. Uh, Moses' sister, obviously, she had courage to do what she did, and so that, that back story there. Um, one of the newest ones that's coming out here just in time for Christmas is I Am Willing uh, by Mary, her story. And, and actually, we hear of it at when Mary says, I am willing. We backed the story up, and what did it take for Mary to become the person that God could say to I want to trust you with this and her say I am willing and how do kids get to that point so those are the types of stories that are out there 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 will there are five um, and we're just pretty excited about all of them so I hope you guys have some fun with those oh I am gonna show you next I'm not gonna show you on my um, on here but the fire Bible Have you guys seen the fire Bible yeah fire Bible for kids some of you are shaking your heads yes okay no? Yes? No? All right. It's a really cool, uh, cool Bible, first of all, um, written just for kids. Now, obviously, the text is the Bible. <laughs> it's, the, um, it's the side notes and the devotions and the, the information that's written out to the sides that helps kids really get into the Bible and get into the Word. Now, here's the really cool part. Can I help you help me? Sure. Hold that right there. There is an app out there on my healthy church. I'm hoping I don't lose this. I'm trying to hold it in there. It's called the Fire Bible for Kids Companion app. And again, we want kids to get we don't want to leave the word. Right guys? Are you guys with me on this? Okay. We don't want to leave the word. I know we've got our we've got our iPhones and iPads and all that stuff. We can pull the word up on it. There's just something about the written scripture. All right? I hope we never lose that. I hope I'm not dating myself and thinking that, but we really want kids to get into God's Word. So, let's tie the digital to what they do. All right, so we've got um, all, the, all the books of the Bible are in here. We're going to go to 1 Kings, and it's on page 396. Is known to have this more than anyone in the world. Thank you. I was beginning to worry about y'all. <laughs> All right, then what it's going to do, it's going to load, and it's going to be, and if you can kind of just hold that up so everybody can see just a second. It's going to look for this picture right here, okay? So if you will kind of come and go on the back side of this, just hold it out there, and I am going to do this. See if I can find it. Oh, oh, well, lucky there. Oh my. Oh, my gosh. You see Solomon's temple? Isn't that awesome? And you can go all the way around Solomon's temple. And there's, just so you know, see, see what it's done? Oh my all right. Gosh. And, then, and then what we've done is two. Um, so there's the... Use the water from the molten sea oh to get clean before and after offering sacrifices. Yep. So it's, it'll, it'll tell you what each part of, the, uh, of Solomon's temple was about. Um, let's, if you would, go to uh, the first page of Genesis. I picked that one because it's easy to find. <laughs> All right. Let's, oh, wait a minute. I've got to get back. Genesis. Okay, I'm going to put you all on the spot. Watch my time for me, guys. I just, uh, we need to get done. Fourth day. What did God create on the fourth day? No, 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 no. Sun, moon, stars. Sun, moon, stars. Yes, I, I'm hearing it. Great job. 
And by the way, I didn't go to the, if you got it wrong, it actually tells you where in the Bible to go to find the right answer. Okay, so we're going to go, oops, we're going to go to the picture. Do you need to go one page over? It's looking for that picture on the very first page. And here's what we're going to find on this one. Let's see. Okay, six days of creation, right? Let's tap on the one. On the first day, God created light and darkness. Okay. On the second day, God created the oceans and the sky. I can go all the way around it. On the third day, God created dry land. Isn't that cool? And trees and vegetation. On the fourth day, God created the sun, moon, and stars. Yeah. On the fifth day, God created the birds of the air and fish in the sea. I know they're working on the, uh, I don't think they've got it ready yet. They were working on that you could actually go down and look and see the, some, the birds and the animals and stuff come on, to, on there, but I don't think it's there yet. So it's being updated even as we speak. So, so anyway, I will let you guys, you can come by the, if you want to come by the, um, and actually take my iPad and do some cool other, look at the other things, you can do that for sure. If you just buy the Bible, the app is free. Yep. Um, they are on sale. <laughs> um, the um, the flex cover I think is thirty dollars here. If you buy them in tens, they're twenty two. But then the the hardback and there's a paperback that they go down in price. Priceless Christmas gift. Yeah, we think so too. Yeah, yeah, we think so too. We think so too. Um, really quick before you guys leave, I know I'm out of time. I don't want to. I don't want to take your time. I do want to though, just highlight really quickly. This one is coming. Uh, I can't say a lot about it, and I would love to go to the website and show you, but I don't want to take your time. If you want to talk to me more about it, we can. Uh, I'll uh, just find me around. It's called IncredibleIslands.com. It is an online virtual world for kids and it is the way we believe it's going to be a new way to do children's ministries because literally you you decide there's an island church and you decide what's in that church so it takes what you do on Sunday mornings or Wednesday nights or whenever you do it and it transfers it to them being able to use it all week long playing the games learning memory verses learning it's reading the bible in a very cool fun and wonderful way all right and i'm going to leave you with that little tidbit come see me if you, and i'll see if i can get the internet up and running and i'll actually have it playing at the at the booth later on okay so